Hello everyone, Seraphin here. Welcome back for more Fire Emblem Sacred Stones. When I last left you guys, we had just finished up Chapter 20 in Darkling Woods, and we're moving on to the final chapter today, Sacred Stone. Convenient. So as I mentioned, we do not get a break between Chapter 20 and the final chapter. We go right into it. Uh, we can access the convoy, but we do not have the ability to go back to the shopping or anything like that. Another flashback sequence. Erica's really naive if she had no idea he was into her. Don't give her the stone. Them's fighting words. Alright, so here we are, the last chapter. We get 12 units to bring, no more. And uh, unfortunately, that leaves us with some very limited space on our team. So we're going to have to decide who stays and who goes. With all regrets that come with that. So why don't I take a look at the map real quick and see what we got. Uh, the nice thing is, potentially, I can do without having Rennick here. Even though there's treasure chests and doors, as you can see. There's only two of them. At least I think there's only two. Is there only two? I thought there was like three or four. Ah, no matter. Anyway. Um, I did bring some extra keys with me, so we don't need to bring Rennick. We can leave him out. Uh, finally, there are some Elder Bales you get to see for, I believe, the first time this entire game. Of course, Leon himself is surrounded by freaking Gorgons. Two of which have Shadow Shot, two of which have Stone, which I'm not fond of. Uh, here are some generic Draco Zombies. These guys, much like Morva before, have uh, unavoidable damage. They only do 27 as opposed to 36, so I guess we have a few more options with regards to killing those things. But they are not to be messed with. Not, uh, not lightly at any rate. We're going to need to proceed very carefully. Uh, here we go. These are promoted Moth Dukes. These are Gwilgis, I guess is how you pronounce that. Uh, they are especially fast for monster units. They're the only monsters that are this fast, by the way. Everything else is slow as heck. But they're effectively three-headed Moth Dukes, so their Cerberus is running around. They are also not to be messed with. Uh, more Gorgons over here in the little treasure chambers with stone. Because of course they do. We can't go straight up the middle in this map, as you'll notice there's nothing there, so we have to go around either to the left or to the right. We're probably just going to split up our forces and meet, have the meet once again in the middle. Leona, do not believe, moves. Uh, here we have the final incarnation of Leon as the Demon King incarnate, basically. He has this tome that only he gets to use, which is called Nagelfar. Uh, 25 might on that sucker. However, it does weigh 18, and Leon still only has 7 con. So, he's going to have a drastic reduction in his effective speed to the tune of 11. So, he has 4 speed for the end of this game. 
That being said, you'll see his defense and resistance are nearly capped, as well as his magic. So he's going to hit like a truck. 54 attack. Yeah, that's not good. Uh, Lara's Shell might be able to put a decent dent in him as far as being able to absorb hits from Nogglefire, but uh, his resistance is so high, she'll have a hard time damaging him, unfortunately. So, that being said, what we are going to do is press forward with what we got. I'm going to go ahead and pick our team here. We, like I said, we don't need Renick, which we're already not bringing him anyway. I would like to bring Ross. I'm not sure about Murr. I don't really need her anymore. She's capped. And using her is just kind of a crutch, really, at this point. So I think we're just going to leave Murr behind. So that leaves... Who do I take out to let Ross join the fight? Because he's got Garm, and I need that. So somebody in this group, unfortunately, is going to have to stay home. I'm seriously leaning toward Naomi at this point, only because I'm not certain how useful she's going to be. Uh, she hasn't even reached S rank with bows yet, so she can't even use Nidhogg. So I think we're just going to leave Naomi behind. That means I won't have access to bows, but if I'm being totally honest, it's not that detrimental to me. So yeah, we're going to leave Naomi behind, and we're going to bring Ross. So, sorry Naomi, you made it all the way up to this point, only to get dropped at the last second. I know that sucks, but I really need Molder for the healing. And everybody else is using legendary weapons, and I need them, so that's how it's going to have to be. At any rate, let's get rolling with our final group of people here. Uh, I think... I don't want to use freaking hammer on a generic light tome, so what I'm going to try to do... The nice thing is, I think I have access to an armory still. Yes, I do. The unfortunate reality of this armory is that it only sells... Uh, like, basic level items. So I'm going to grab my silver card here. And we're going to have Renick go shopping real quick. I'm going to grab some couple extra lightning tomes in the event that Mulder or Larishel break theirs and you need of new ones. And I'll put them in the convoy so that they can access them from Erica herself. Uh, Naomi's not coming, so we can put all her stuff away. Murr's not coming, we can put all her stuff away. So I can give somebody else the Philly Shield. I'm probably going to give it to Tana or Cormag. We'll give it to Cormag. Doesn't really need this Lance Reaver. I don't know why I gave it to him in the first place. So we'll have Cormag with the Philly Shield. And somebody can have the Hoplon Guard. I think I'm going to put it on Tethys for the time being, but I'll give it to somebody else when they need it. Just because I don't want to get crit, because being crit is bad. And uh, I think everybody else is good for the most part. Garrick does not need this Sword Slayer. I don't even want to look... I, I left it on him because I thought he might be able to use it, but he can't, so... Let me get his Silver Blade back out. Yeah, everybody else is ready. So let's get this party started, shall we? As soon as I position everyone properly. Erica and Ephraim can't be moved, apparently. Alright. I think... And do this. Yep, there we go. We're ready to go. So this is it, the final chapter. Let's get into it. Just occurred to me I didn't grab the freaking keys that I meant to grab out of the convoy, but that's fine. I can have someone else grab them real quick. Or I can wait till after we're done killing things to go get them. Very creepy, ominous music for here, by the way. Is there anything... Oh, these guys have door keys. And chest keys. That's awfully convenient. I guess they didn't want you to have to worry about bringing freaking Rennick to this map, or or Colm if he was a rogue. Oh wait, we've got enough door keys, but not enough chest keys. Which is fine, because I have an extra one in my convoy. So we're going to go ahead and run Ross right up into here. With the silver axe, and I'll have Erica right, on to, right off on the flank here. I'll give her her rapier. We'll have Garrick and Ephraim go this way. Ephraim can have a silver lance. Gilliam, I think, is going to go this way. We need someone a little tankier to go that direction. Uh, we'll have Franz sit right in the middle because I haven't decided on him yet. Cormac can go this way. Tana can go this way. I'm going to need a healer per side, so we'll have Mulder go with this team. 
I want to have a little bit more magic punching power on this side also. So we'll go with that arrangement, and then Tethys can be right in the front, right in the center. We'll probably have her go with the right party, so we'll have Franz go this way too. All right, bring it on, monstrosities! This is a very interesting final chapter. There actually is two parts. Uh, you'll notice that Leon himself is not actually the Demon King, not yet. Uh, I don't think we're going to need the Brave Axe, so we'll leave that behind and get the door key out of the way. I'll go ahead and crack that open and then leave him some space to grab the chest key from the other white that is up there. And we see these guys are just kind of flushing right down here. Like a big swirly turd. It's kind of what they are if you think about it, they're just terrible. They probably don't smell very good either. Much like a turd. But we'll go ahead and destroy them mercilessly with this axe. 22 on the on the offensive sides, I'm just noticing for Garrick. That's pretty neat. That's a door key for him. Uh, we don't need the brave sword for him. We'll leave that behind. Brave weapons are a little overkill during the campaign, I find. I guess maybe unless you're on, like, on hard mode or something. But during the campaign itself, you really don't need them. They're just really overkill and obscenely powerful. Uh, we're going to have Tana take out that stupid jerk of a Gorgon before it does any damage. What are these guys holding? Anything? No, not really. There is an Axe Reaver right up front, but... Do I care? Yeah, I probably should care. No, that's fine. I think, I think Franz can handle it. Maybe not. He's only getting hit for two in retaliation, so it's not that big of a deal, but... I guess we can send Ephraim up there. He certainly won't mind being able to kill things, and he's kind of one of my most important people, so... There is that. Uh, let's see here... Who do I want to use now? Um, we're gonna have Tana move and take out that Gorgon like I was originally planning. So we're gonna have her move. We'll have her move right here. Actually, I want to keep her close to the other side in case I need to change sides. But I want Tana in range to take out the Gorgon right away. Because I don't like Gorgons very much. So we'll just spear that dude right through the face. By face, I mean not face. That's okay. I'm going to have to go grab a chest key from Tana, or not Tana, from Erica real quick. I suppose Garrick can go do that now that he's got a free spot in his inventory. Uh, we will have Ross open up this door, and then I will have Cormag contend with the other Gorgon real quick. So that takes care of them before they become a threat. on and have Gilliam dispatch with these poor suckers. I gotta be careful of these Draco zombies. I don't want to be in range of them until I'm absolutely... Oh crap, I just realized. Totally in range over here. Ephraim is. He's gonna take 27 damage. Yeesh. Alright, that's not good. I didn't prepare for that, so we're definitely gonna have Mulder over here. I'll take out this one so he has less chance of getting hit. I don't think he's going to be getting hit by that other one and get killed in the process, but I don't want to risk it, really. Um, speaking of, let's have Lara Shell pop up here and deal with these jerks. Alright, that takes care of them. And as I said, we'll have Gilliam come up here and contend with these poor sods. And I gotta be a little bit more careful when I move ahead on the right side here, because as I mentioned with the uh, aforementioned Draco zombie there. Let's see how strong this one is. 27, yeah. So yeah, Ephraim's gonna get for 27. He'll have 12 HP left, and he can take a Steel Lance and be fine. So as long as I have somebody on hand to heal him, that will be the important thing. 
Actually, does Tethys have space in her inventory? No, she doesn't. She has the Hoplon Guard. But... I can go to my supply, take out that chest key, and trade it to her. Actually, I can have her hang on to it, too, if I take the Vulnerary away. There we go. And then I can give the chest key to Garrick to open the chest, or I can let Tana do it or somebody else. We'll have loot go this way. And here comes more of these silly jerks. Wrecked. This really isn't the most difficult in the way of final chapters, as far as they're concerned, but... Oh good, I got the chest key from him too. I guess Ross can go crack that open now. Level 9 Ross, and all he gets is HP. Well, I guess... Uh, whatever. Anyway. This guy's going for Franz. No big deal. Franz laughs at him with his axe. He is very speedy for a great knight, I will give him that, but he's lacking in certain areas. And then here comes Draco Zombie for going for Ephraim, which we knew already. Oh, jeez. That's what Wretched Air looks like, if you were curious. It's not very pleasant. It rarely misses, either, so... Alright, first things first, we're gonna heal Ephraim, because I don't need to take another one of those. And I'm gonna make an effort to dispatch with that Draco Zombie before it has a chance to hit anybody else. Which means pulling out a Sacred Twin weapon. I think Ephraim can just use Sigmund to... Oh, jeez, he's going to get hit still anyway. You know what? That's fine. As long as he's not in range of any, like, magic guys or anything. I'll just let... Yeah, we'll let uh, Ephraim mop up the Draco Zombie here with Sigmund. We get some Sacred Twin music going on. Ow. You can dodge Wretched Air, by the way. It's just not likely to miss, unfortunately. It's got an exceptionally high hit rate, so... Alright, that's one of the two Draco Zombies down, and I'll move in Franz to help Ephraim with... In fact, I'm going to trade away his Sigmund so he doesn't waste it. And I'll dispatch this other white. And that frees up some space on the left side here. Just got to deal with the rightmost Draco Zombie. Haven't decided who's going to do that yet. I might let Loot do it. Alright, can Garrick get in there to get the chest? Yes, he can. So we're going to trade him. Actually, you know what I could just do? No, that's fine. I'll just have Garrick do it. He needs the chest key still. And we'll trade him the chest key. And get him in there to open it. A Master Seal! This slate in the game! What could you possibly have a use for that for? Like, come on, really? Like, oh well, anyway. We'll move, is this Erica? Yeah, it is. I'm actually going to put her back over here where she's supposed to be in the first place. In case we need convoy access, I will get Ross in, no, I can't get Ross in there to do it. I guess I'll let, no. Yeah, that's fine. Ross can run in there and grab it. It's just going to take a little longer. Although... No, I'll just have Cormac do it. Screw it. Um, I can trade this stuff back after I'm done. Take the chest key off his hands. Go and pop that open. An angelic robe! Well, wow, that's nice. Would have been useful before now, but... Alright, who's taking out the Draco Zombie? I think... We let loot do it. Although, what's the guy's damage? 27. He'll put loot down to one hit point. She can take it, but she'll be in a bad way afterwards. But she should retaliate and kill with Excalibur. How fast is this guy? Four. Uh, yeah, yeah, we're gonna double hit him. So yeah, we let loot move in and do it. Make sure I've got the right range here. I keep forgetting. Right here. Alright, loot, do your thing, girl. Excalibur is just too much fun to not use. And we'll get a shot of that in just a second, as soon as Ephraim's done dealing with this stupid Killing Edge White. That would have been a problem if he wasn't going to not do damage to me. 
But as it stands, not quite a threat. Boy, oh boy, oh boy. One hit point left. Awesome. Here comes Excalibur. Apparently you only get the cool Sacred Twin music when you're initiating the damage, not, or initiating the attack, not when you're being attacked. Which is fine. You'll notice Excalibur is exactly the same as it was in uh, Blazing Sword. Except for the whole uh, burst of light at the beginning. And that is true. It is the same exact tone, pretty much. It's actually a bit more powerful than the other one. I think. Whoa, that's a lot of Mogals. All right. Well, why don't you? Why don't we? Uh, let's get loot higher than one hit point here, real quick. And I think I'm gonna let Lara Shell run in there and handle all those schmucks. That should get her really high up on the weapon experience chain there. I'll go ahead and leave everybody else back a little bit. Let's get this trade back in order here. Whoops, not that. There we go. Not that Ross needs that thing either. Um, I'm going to put this Vulnerary away and take out a Lightning Tome for... Actually, I'm going to grab the Aura Tome out for Lara Shell for when she has the ability to use it, because I think that's going to be pretty soon. Stop with the Convoy nonsense. Alright, there we go. Let's get Garrick back out of here. Uh, Ephraim could do with another heal because he got walloped by that stupid Draco zombie twice. These silly Draco zombies. Alright, that'll be him topped off. Nice. Magic 19. Nice. Really good magic and skill on Mulder here. He's going to cap skill pretty quick, I think. He's also quite fast. Like, you wouldn't think a man like Mulder would be that quick, but he actually is quite fast. All right, we're going to have Tana deal with the Moth Dukes, I think. Since she's one of the few people capable of double-hitting them. Elder Bales might be a little bit of an issue, but... We'll park Franz right here with his hand axe to deal with that one. Ephraim will be on station to help, and we'll have Tethys in the back. Another well, level up for Tethys puts her at 20 for 15, I'm sorry, level 15. Almost there. All right, yeah, we're going to let um, Lara Shell deal with all these Mogals. I'm going to pull Gilliam back a little bit, too. All right, get at me, suckers. I wonder what reinforcements are going to show up on the left side here, if anything. Doesn't quite one-shot them, but dang near. Oh, that'll do. Completely unnecessary critical hit. What are you going to do? a lot of Mughals, I just realized. Pew! Whole lot of nothing. You guys suck. Because you're just silly little monsters that don't know what you're doing. Alright, Lady of Light, go to town on these mofos. There's Crimson Eye, you can see that now. Not that it matters, because Lara Shell does not care. She is simply too awesome to give a single crap. So now I'm going to have to pull back the rest of my forces so they don't get beaten on by Crimson Eyes. It's a little unfortunate, but you do what you got to do. Alright, uh, Erica can be fine if she sits right here. And then Loot's got to sit one spot behind that. Yeah, they're all going to go for her, and they're all going to get wrecked. So, that is ultimately my goal. We'll get the other, we'll fish the other Wilgi out of his hidey hole there. We'll get a Killer Lance equipped, why not? And uh, I'm going to draw out this other Sniper with Franz. Let's make sure he's not in range of these Mogals himself. He's not, okay. How about the Shadow Shot jerks? Where are they in the back? Oh yeah, we're plenty out of range of them. Yeah, we'll let Franz deal with the other archer guy. I'll have Ephraim on site to help. More Tethys dancing, because that's what we do. Probably should get Garrick up here. He's kind of chilling in the back a little bit. There we go. Alright, let's go to town. I know I'm taking this a little slow and low right now. 
I probably don't need to be this cautious. Most of my team is going to be fine just running right into there, but with that mass of Gorgons right in front, uh, that's going to be something I have to be a little wary of. Between being turned to stone or shadow shot in the face, i got to be a little bit more cautious. Because I don't want to randomly lose somebody this late into the game. That would be an absolute travesty. And Lara Shell, I'm hoping, is going to reach A rank with Light Tomes any second here. That would be ideal. That's going to cap her resistance and be one point shy of capping her speed, I believe. So she does not care about these silly Crimson Eye guys whatsoever. Even if they could hit her, they wouldn't even do anything to her. This light magic... Or it turns out light purifies everything. As we are learning with La Rochelle here. The power of the light. There is A rank in light magic for her. So I can give her that aura tome now. Not that she needs it, but hey, it'll look cool. And because she's so blinking fast... Even with the slowdown, she's only, she's still going to be effectively an 18 speed, which is fast enough to double everything except a Gwilgi, I guess, but everything else is going to be nothing to her. You are so adorable with your stupid Crimson Eye magic. Even though you're getting laughed at by the Princess of Light here. I know I'm showing La Rochelle a lot of favoritism this playthrough, I'm sorry if you guys try using her and she doesn't turn out anywhere near as good. Uh, so far, every time that I've used her, she's always this good. If not better in some cases. Her defense I don't think has ever been this good, but certainly I've had her cap out magic by this point. And skill. But she always caps luck, there's no question. She will always cap luck, always cap resistance. Her HP's a little on the lackluster side, but she's a caster, so that's to be expected. There aren't many casters that have very good hit point values or defense for that matter. I guess Dark Mages could be the exception to that. But I'm not using a Dark Mage. So there's that off the table, I suppose. I think that's just about all of them. How's she looking on that Shine Tome? Five uses left. Yep, one more point away from capping speed, which she definitely will do. Uh, uh, magic she might cap, but she would need to get one every single level up from now on. So it's iffy. And she would also need to get skill every level up to cap that. So it's possible, but I'm not going to hold my breath. So let, now that everybody is out of the way, let's get them moved up here. Um, I got that Aura Tomo for Lara Shell, so we can let her use that. I'll let her finish off the Malduin, too. And this guy. And then, she'll, then it'll be down to one use and I can just throw the thing away. Let her go to town with Aura. Because Aura will be sickly awesome. And I'm looking forward to it. Alright, so we got Gorgons to contend with. Let's, let's lure out the Elder Bale too with Tana. Give her her Silver Lance. How come no reinforcement showed up on this side yet? That's a little weird. Uh, those Gorgons were in range to turn Franz to stone, and they didn't. That's a little interesting. I wonder why. But at any rate, well, what does this guy have? He has a Lance. We'll get Franz in range with a Steel Axe. Leave my resident helpful people on station in case they are needed. And we'll put Garrick right there. Our Rochelle's already moved up. We can get the rest of our team put back where they belong, pretty much. Run Erica up here, and Cormag up this way. That'll do. And I did get both those treasure chests, right? Yeah, I did. Okay. Angelic robe and a master seal of all things. Oh, silly sword reaver. At least this guy got a chance to do damage. Not a very good one, but a chance. These guys are also quite tanky. They're effectively, as I said, the monster equivalent of warriors, so they have a lot of hit points and decent, uh, well, I guess halfway decent defense. Oh, Fruit Loops! I forgot about Shadow Shot. Please dodge that. Okay, good, he did. Yeah, that would have been really bad. Oh, jeez, there's the reinforcements I was waiting for. 
Took him a little bit. Took him a second, but there they are. These guys aren't moving. None of them are. The whites are in range. The gorgons are in range. They're not moving. The bale didn't move either, I just noticed. Maybe they just don't move, unless they're provoked. Which they must not be in range to be provoked just yet. I wonder if I push Tana further a little bit more, if that will draw them out. I mean, if, if they're not going to move, that's fine. I can just run in there and smash them all to bits, but... If I know they're going to move, I want to be careful. I know Leon does not move, for a fact. He does not move, because that would be ridiculous. Final bosses generally don't move. That's actually a lie. In Path of Radiance, believe it or not, the final boss does move. And it's quite threatening, as a matter of fact, so... There's always that to contend with. Alright, I think that's going to be darn near capping defense for Ephraim. One more. He'll cap at 23. 23 seems a little low, doesn't it? It's, the thing, problem with Ephraim is his caps are very low, which is really irritating. I would like him to have higher... I want him to have higher speed. A skill, I guess, I can deal with. 26 is a good number. He's got 27 or 28 strength, which is also good. Defense should cap a little higher. Like, 25. Come on. Anyway. I'll talk more about stat caps and how frustrating they are maybe some other time, but for now... We're going to call it right here. I will resume next time with part two of the final chapter. We'll clear out this map and move on to the second half of the final chapter, which is considerably shorter. So if things go right, we'll get everything cleared out in the next episode. And that'll be the end of Sacred Stones for the time being. So that being said, until that time, thank you very much for watching. I really do appreciate it. And I really appreciate all of you sticking with me this far. We're almost done. So stick around for the finale next episode. And until then, this has been Seraphin. Stay classy, internets.